It's Monday, November 18, and it's 37 days until Christmas. President Granger declares annual inter-service swimming and athletics championship open. Prime Minister Nagamutu says no community should be left behind, and close to 2,000 graduate at UG's 53rd convocation. Welcome to Info Hub. His Excellency, President David Granger, has declared open the annual inter-services swimming and athletics championship at the Base Camp Ayangana Playfield on Sunday. In brief remarks, Commander-in-Chief President Granger noted that while the championship will bring rivalry, he hopes that it will also promote cooperation and collaboration between the Army, police, fire and prison services. I know there is fierce rivalry among the uniformed services. This is good, but cooperation is as important as competition. And when we cooperate, the rising tide lifts all boats. All of us benefit. The president told those gathered that successes within the force will translate positively for the rest of the country. I feel confident that if each of the services, if each of you at the personal level, at the organization level do well, the country as a whole will benefit. The head of state urged the ranks to do their best both professionally and personally. Residents of Aliki located in Region 3 on Sunday braved the rains to have their concerns addressed by a ministerial team led by Prime Minister the Honorable Moses Nagamutu. Prime Minister the Honorable Moses Nagamutu assured residents of Aliki that it is the government's vision for every community to have access to all government services. But as a central government, our responsibility is to ensure that all areas receive attention. Areas on the coast, areas in the river and area, areas in the hinterland. And our policy has been to bridge this division between the coast and the hinterland communities. No community should be left behind. That is the policy of the coalition government. That is the vision of President David Granger. The Prime Minister explained that while the government is presently in a peculiar position, he will make the proper representation to ensure their concerns are addressed. He also encouraged the young people in the village to become entrepreneurs. We have several areas, projects, that we have undertaken under this new government. One is to empower young people. We have started a process to make our young people important. We encourage them to get into self-employment. We encourage them to become entrepreneurs. Accompanying the Prime Minister to the Aliki meeting were Minister of Public Health, the Honorable Valda Lawrence, and Minister of Public Telecommunications, the Honorable Catherine Hughes. I would like to say to all of those women in our midst, childbearing, women who would like to have an implant that our doctors here at the health center and within three minutes you can have an implant. I come to show you that we work and we are caring government. We are concerned about our people. That regardless of where you are located, we're beginning to ensure that you have all the same opportunities. Yeah. For InfoHub, Rebecca Ganesh. Former Chief Justice Ian Chang on November 16 passed away at a city hospital. Described as a true son of the soil by the judiciary and magistracy, Justice Chang served as one of the nation's chief justices from 2006 until his retirement in 2016. He also served with distinction in the chambers of the Director of Public Prosecutions for over 20 years. Justice Chang's death will undoubtedly leave a void in the justice system and with colleagues within the legal fraternity whose lives he impacted. The judiciary and magistracy have expressed condolences to the family and friends of Justice Ian Chang. May his soul rest in peace. In our next report, we tell you that more than 2,000 persons this weekend graduated from the University of Guyana at its 53rd convocation ceremony. The students were conferred with degrees and diplomas from the faculties of Agriculture and Forestry, Education and Humanities, Health Sciences, Natural Sciences, Social Sciences, School of Entrepreneurship and Business Innovation, and the Institute of Distance and Continuing Education. 
Two graduation ceremonies were held to accommodate the large number of graduates. The graduates from the faculties of Health Sciences, Social Sciences, and the School of Entrepreneurship and Business Innovation were conferred their degrees at the afternoon ceremony. The ceremony also marked the official installation of UG's 10th Chancellor, Professor John Edward Green, whose first duty was to confer degrees and diplomas to the graduating class of 2019. The imperatives for you as you leave this campus is really to be seen as part of the product and part of the investment in higher education from Guyana and to give internal recognition for protecting the integrity of your qualifications. Karishma Narain of the Faculty of Medical Sciences and Shane Rampertab, a student of the Faculty of Natural Sciences, have both been named valedictorians of UG's class of 2019. Both students earned a perfect grade point average of 4.0. The reason I'm standing here before you today is not because I'm supposedly better than any one student. It is because I was allowed the right environment to succeed. A similar ceremony will be held at the university's Tain campus on November 23, 2019. Shaquille Bourne, for InfoHub. Great news for the indigenous community of Waramuri in the Maruka sub-district as it will now benefit from a new $12 million electricity distribution system. The system which will provide power to 350 residents of the Maruko sub-district village was officially handed over and commissioned on Saturday, November 16th, by Minister of Natural Resources, the Honorable Raphael Trotman. The electricity system, which is complemented by lead lights, will power the village's school, health facility and police station. With provisions made in the 2019 budget for the system's procurement and installation, Minister Trotman assured that this is greater than an election promise. He said it represents the government's commitment to ensuring all Guyanese have access to an improved standard of living. We have a president and a cabinet and parties in government who want to make a difference in your lives. Minister Trotman added that Guyanese in every corner of the country are now better off than they were, citing development in education, infrastructure and public security. The fact that it has come means that you are not forgotten and it means that we have kept our promise. The multi-million dollar electricity system represents a fulfilled need of the community. Under the previous administration, the villagers were presented with a small generator which could not adequately power the village. Over the last few days, ministers of government have met with and listened to concerns of residents of regions 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, and 6. Neola Damon, InfoHub. When we return, major infrastructural works for Fort Island, Lower Bonasica, and Leguan gets a multi-million dollar sea defense boost. Details of these stories and more after the break. Stay with us. Welcome back. Fourth Island and Lower Bonasica in the Essequibo Islands are set to undergo major transformation as Minister of Public Infrastructure. The Honorable David Patterson pledged an infrastructural upgrade package to enhance the living standard of the residents. One of the visions of His Excellency is that every riverine area that has a waterfront, that it must be built in such a way as MP Carlton says, it is inviting and safe for everyone. We believe it all that at, at, at every village will be a nice focal point. You, you mean a, a, a wharf sort of telling social area where persons and tourists, a lot of tourists will be coming here. A lot of persons, um, they'll be coming from landlocked countries. They, they've never seen rivers um, this big, this wide, this majestic. Minister of Public Infrastructure, the Honorable David Patterson, $40 million will be invested come 2020 to upgrade the Fort Island stelling. After meeting with residents of Fort Island, Minister Patterson traveled to Lower Bonasica, where he committed to provide solar streetlights for both Fort Island and Lower Bonasica. This will be donated through the Guyana Energy Agency, which falls under the purview of the Ministry of Public Infrastructure. In relation to the construction of a walkway in Riversview, Lower Bonasica, 
Minister Patterson told residents his ministry will provide the materials and equipment as the island dwellers opt to execute the works through a self-help initiative. The Region 3 administration is exploring the possibility of having a nursery school constructed at Riversview. Shaquille Bourne, for InfoHub. Residents of Leguan can breathe easier with two brand new multi-million dollar sea defense projects being completed and commissioned on the island on Sunday. The projects, one at Success and the other at Endeavor, are crucial as the island is often prone to flooding during the high tide. This is a multi-billion dollar project, over eight million U.S. Um, dollars, um, um, with the support of the Caribbean Development Bank, designed to keep our ocean away from the land of uh, Leguan. And this just goes to show that uh, what we've been saying, that the government is interested in development not only of areas that voted for it, but uh, the entire country. According to Minister Jordan, the initiative was undertaken with the people of Leguan in mind. This is all about the people who live on this island and who make a living from this island. So I'm extremely grateful to have been able to um, come here and um, see the project and just help cut the ribbon to the clear to. Added to this, these projects are proof of the government's commitment to working for all Guyanese. Minister of Social Protection, the Honorable Amna Ali. This coalition government is about serving its people. And whether you belong to the coalition government or you do not belong to the government, it is our duty to serve you. And this is what we have been doing. Minister Ali commissioned the sea defense at Endeavour, which was constructed by BK International. Both projects were funded by the Caribbean Development Bank. Reporting for InfoHub, Nikosi Bruce. Minister of Social Cohesion, who also holds responsibility for sport, the Honorable Dr. George Norton, says the National School's Cycling, Swimming and Track and Field Championship helps to not only showcase the nation's most promising athletes, but to motivate youths to become more active. The minister opened an annual National School Cycling, Swimming and Track and Field Championship, which is in its 59th year on Sunday at the National Track and Field Center, Lenora. The Nationals, if we are boys and girls, either come to realize that sports simply make fantastic hobbies, or that the dream of becoming an Olympian can very well become a reality, despite all the development in sports, our aim as a government is to mold a strong, educated, well-rounded nation. It was a kaleidoscope of colors as the athletes and teachers from 15 districts took to the field. Chief Education Officer Marcel Utzon told the gathering that the Education Ministry is currently taking steps to ensure sports is integrated in the school curriculum. As a ministry, we have been constantly focusing on the holistic development of our learners, hence the heavy financial investment in sports and physical education. It is because we believe engaging in sports will significantly improve the overall development of our children. For the next six days, members of the public can enjoy the slated activities for the championships, which will also be held at the National Aquatic Center and the National Park. District 10 Upper Demararo Kokwani has won the competition 17 times and will seek to all off their rivals, particularly District 11, not George Tung. Neola Damon, InfoHub. Remember to tune in to The Voice of Guyana on Friday, November 22nd at 11 hours when Minister of Natural Resources, the Honorable Raphael Trotman, will be discussing recent updates in the sector on NCN's radio program, Insight. Remember to check our website, www.dpi.gov.gy and Facebook and Instagram pages for a special report on recently hosted regional meetings. That's all for today. Connect with us on WhatsApp, Facebook and YouTube. Much more news is on our website, dpi.gov.gy, and pop over to Instagram for the latest photo updates at DPI Guyana. Your bridge and weather reports are up next. Goodbye for now.